Hi, welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to change this wooden ring into this pretty sunflower button. So let's get started. For this button, you will need a ring. I'm using an MDF flat profile button because it, this button is the Zornopf technique. So a flat ring actually works best. You can use a metal ring if you wish. I like this particular one because I like the width between the spaces. I've marked it out, as you can see, to 10 divisions. I've used our circle gauge. I marked it first with pencil and then went over it with Sharpie so that you can actually see the divisions. Um, but we are going to need to lay for 20 spokes, not the 10 that I've marked. It will all become clear. So the first thing that we need to do is wrap the spokes. Keep the thread for your wrapping on the ball or the spool, however you're using it. I'm using a number eight pearl cotton for this particular button um, throughout, actually. Then I'm going to hold the end of the thread at the back of the button ring. And then I'm gonna lay a wrap from bottom to top on the marks. And then I'm going to lay one either side. So in my instructions, whenever I write instructions, this is one wrap of three ends because it's three lengths of thread side by side. That one wrap will create two spokes because a wrap is across the face of the button, a spoke is from the center out. So that one wrap creates two spokes. So what we need to do for this particular button is we need to lay 10 for 20 of three ends. So now I'm just going to slightly rotate and then I'm going to wrap in the middle in between the two marks because as I said, I only marked 10. So if we line one up, in the middle, middle of every one of these spaces, we'll get the number that we need. You can, of course, do this by eye. Marking out divisions is useful with higher numbers. It's also useful uh, if you're making sets of buttons because then you'll know that they match. Um, you know, a little, a little bit out here or there on a, an individual button isn't quite the same as being out on a whole set. I'm holding the button along the edge, not on the face of the button. This is quite important because this means that you won't, you're less likely anyways, to dislodge those um, spokes as you're wrapping. If you're holding them here, you're likely to move them. Your tension needs to be taut, but not too tight. Um, if it's too tight, you will find that your um, wraps will start to pull towards around the edge, they'll, they'll move out of place. So it takes some practice getting the right amount of tension. But if you find that you, they're slipping, in actual fact, nine times out of 10, it's because you're wrapping too tightly, not too loosely, which is sort of not how our brain thinks it should be. So there's all of the wraps. And now we're going to cut the thread end so that we can fasten this off. Now you can, if you're confident, 
hold it in your fingers um, and then cut it, but you do need to thread a needle. So here's where the our tool tin um, and third hand comes in handy because on that magnetic sheet, uh, that magnetic, magnetic tin, that clip sits. And so you've got a free hand now. You can cut the end, you can thread your needle, and we're gonna just take that underneath some of the threads at the back. I'm also going to pull down that um, starting thread and I'm gonna tie these. Let me just take that a little bit shorter. And I'm, so I'm gonna tie the beginning to the end as it were. You don't always have to do this. Sometimes it will be so well covered up by the spokes and everything else that you do that you can't find it anyways, and that's fine. But if you can see it, it doesn't hurt to tie, tie that in for a little bit of extra security. So there's our initial spokes. If you have any that you think aren't quite even, you can tweak it a little bit with your nail and get them so that they line up. The more even your initial spokes are, the better the overwrapping will look and the more even that will look. So now we're coming on to color two. I'm gonna use a yellow for this one. And again, I'm going to keep it on the ball. This time I'm going to thread the end onto my needle, take it under some of the threads at the back and remove the needle. I'm then just going to tie the end and trim that tail so it doesn't annoy me later as I'm working. And that's it, don't pull too tight, you just want to, it to be secured in place. I'm gonna take it over and we're now gonna lay the over wraps. So I'm going to place the thread at the side of one of the spokes and I'm gonna come up in a straight line. Now that's too many because I've skipped too many spokes here. We need to skip five for this particular design. So one, two, three, four, five. So that means I need to be anchored on that one. So five empty spokes. I'm gonna rotate slightly and place the next. I'm gonna carry on making sure that every spoke has the second color overlaid and each of them is going to be overlaid twice. So if you can see here, I've got one going in that direction, one going in that direction, so creating a little point underneath. So you'll need that on every single one of the spokes. Don't place your spokes too tight Again, it's down to taut, but not tight. If they're too tight, you might uh, dislodge your initial spokes while you're laying the over spokes. And there you have it. So now I'm going to fasten this off. So again, a little bit of thread cut from the spool, thread my needle. Make sure that you hold on to your threads as you're um, moving them from the clip because it, it's only wrapped at this point until you fasten it in place. And then I'm just gonna weave through a couple of times. I don't need to do too much. So that is step two complete. So we have a pretty little um, spirally design. Just hold that up for you. Now we're going to start with the actual um, sunflower design itself. 
I'm going to use a um, yellowy color and this does need to be cut from the spool. So I would normally use about an arm's length. You don't want to use too much. You don't want it to be so that it tangles and you can always add more. So I'm just going to thread the needle and I am going to knot the end. If you're someone who really dislikes knots on projects, don't worry, you can weave it through at the back, but it is a little easier if you just use a little knot. And I'm just going to secure that at the end. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make little markers and this will help, this will do two things. It will help to secure these yellow threads because as we work they're going to get dislodged if we're not careful. So I'm going to pick a spoke, it doesn't matter which one, and I'm going to come up and I'm just going to hold those stitches underneath, just that bottom row where they're forming a circle there, okay? And now I'm going to skip three, okay? And I'm going to do that again and just make a little stitch. Only I'm going to actually skip three, not two. <laughs> However, as you can see, just take your needle out and go work backwards. So one, two, three, I need to bring it to this one. And I'm going to do the same thing again. And then one, two, three. Again. and then one, two, three, and again, and then one, two, three, and that should be the last one. And that has given me five little stitches. We're going to cover that up so it doesn't matter if they're not absolutely perfect in placement, but it's going to help you to easily count the fact that you have got three spokes in between each of those. So now you know that you have five petals. So I'm going to now come up sort of towards the center and I'm going to take the needle underneath the yellow and if you can you don't have to but if you can underneath the one um, blue spoke that's at the center but that's not vital and then I'm going to come back down to about the same place for a loop and then we come back up, just move it slightly over so that it's not in the same place. And I'm going to go around those yellow ones, just the yellow one this time. And that's going to give me three. Now I'm going to start weaving to work back down. So I'm just going to weave over and under the three threads and back and forth. I'm 
Don't let these pull in too much. You, you still want it to be a petal shape, not a stick shape. So you do need to um, take care not to pull the weaving too tight together. And if you need to, manipulate it to spread it out a little bit as well. Push up so that they form a nice woven space. This is the bottom row of flowers, as it were, so the underneath layer. So it gives you a bit of a chance to sort of get into the swing of things, figure out what you're doing, and get into a rhythm. Um, because they will be more or less covered up as you work. Now really, I should have had my um, initial threads a little bit wider spaced to really give this a nice shape but we don't have to worry too much as I say because the bottom of this is going to be ultimately more or less covered up okay so there's the first petal then I'm going to come to the next place and I'm going to repeat again. I'll spread this one out a little bit further this time. And again, I'm at the stitch that I created earlier. So that saves with the, the counting. And I've spread that one out a little bit more. And then I'm going to bring one up at the center. it'll be easier for you to see and it'll make a nicer petal spreading it out a little. And I'm just going to weave again over and under back and forth. So where one row is over, under, over, the next row is under, over, under. So, so it creates an, a full lovely petal. Again, I'm just going to take a length and thread my needle. I just want to layer this up, which is why I'm putting the green down now, just so that it's, there's a little bit of depth. Knotting the end, just as before, and fastening at the back. I'm going to come up. At the side of one of those petals that we've created and then I'm going to go around one of the spokes at the top there and come back down then I'm going to skip a spoke and do the same at the side of this petal And I'll do this all of the way around. Now you can at any point cover the ring itself with blanket stitches if um, you're familiar with working this one knob. Very often I do that before I do any of the decorative um, elements. But I thought it would be easier for you if you could see sort of what remained uncovered and where the spokes were that I'm working with each time.
Now I'll just weave under a few times at the back to fasten that off. And now another length of the pedal thread. Attach it in the same way, threading a needle and knotting one end. And then I'm going to do woven petals over the top. Now these ones, I want to come in a little bit more down towards the center, although of course sunflowers have a very large center, so we don't have to worry too much. But let that be my first, I think. And then I'm gonna come out so that I try to cover up and capture. So these petals are a bit wider. I'll show you what I mean. So I want it to be so that it's at the center and it tidies up and sort of slightly covers up the ones laid previously. But beyond that, it's going, they're going to be made in exactly the same way, weaving back and forth, back down to the center of the button each time. So again, I will carry on doing that. Try not to catch ends of thread. The only thing that you have to take care while you're doing all of this is to not dislodge your over spokes in particular. So the yellow spokes that we laid here, sometimes you can just sort of move them. So just make sure they're all still in place and if one moves, just use your nail to pop or your needle just to edge it back where it should be. As you're weaving, try not to catch any of the threads underneath because that will help you to be able to shape your petal a little bit more afterwards as well. If there's a space underneath. Don't worry if you do, but if you can manage to not catch the threads, it will really help. So I will carry on and do the remainder of the petals, so one in between each of the others. There's all of the petals complete. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cover those spaces on the ring. Now I'm going to use two colors to do this, to emphasize the blue and the yellow a little bit more. 
So I've threaded up a needle and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold, because I'm going to be working um, clockwise, I'm going to hold the, the end of the thread at the back. Now I can either hold it, but because I have the spokes, I can also weave through underneath some of those spokes at the back and then work the blanket stitch over the top of that which will help to hold it. And what I want to do is I want to work one stitch either side of the point and there would be a little gap I don't know if you can see there'll be a little gap in between there okay that's fine I'm going I'm working so that the ridge of that blanket stitch goes down the back as well so you just have to manipulate a little get your needle underneath you don't want to catch those um, petals that you've created and that's why you can do this um, before you start working any of the petals and for many sworn knob that is really the way that you would work however because I really want to um, add a little bit of extra with this the blue and yellow I just thought it would be easier for you to see what's happening if I waited otherwise you might not be able to see those spokes that I've been working on that's fine you just use your needle to push down and feel where you're going Now if you find that your thread is starting to kink up a bit, just hold your thread up by the needle and you'll see that the button spins and that's taking that excess twist out of that thread and that will help to stop tangling as you're working the blanket stitch. So you may need to do that a, a couple of times. Um, but it's the nature of blanket stitch that it, it twists as you work. It twists your thread up more than it, it, it is twisted, if that makes sense. And that can give you kinks in your thread while you're, which of course can create knots that you can't get out. Now I could leave it like that. There's a few little gaps though you see because really ideally three threads will fit in each. I'm just going to fasten this off at the back so I'm going to go around some of those ridges and I could knot it or I could just take it to the center and thread it under. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, the bright yellow, in between each. So again, I'm going to thread up my needle. And this is where your design, you know, you could just do three um, of the blue. You could choose to use a different color scheme altogether, of course, as well. I'm going to knot the end of this one and just fasten it at the back. It's going to come that's coming up underneath one of those ridges which is fine and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a wrap now I think it might be easier to wrap from the top down so I'm coming around the outside and I'm placing it in between 
those two stitches. So I'm just using my nail or you can use your needle to do that as you work around. So you just want to make sure that that's positioned in between. And you should have enough space if you're using the Perlet. I will list everything that I've used so you can see what size ring that I've used and everything. Of course you may need to make adjustments if you're making this larger or smaller of course. As I say I just wanted to really emphasize the blue and the the yellow on the background. Obviously for the Ukraine And I'll just fasten off at the back. Now I'm going to add the French knots. I have started. So I'm going to show you two ways to add French knots onto your button. I've come up from the bottom. The first way, use the tool tin. That can hold your button in place for you. So you come up, hold your thread taut, wrap your needle twice, take your needle back down, but hold on to this thread. So as you're drawing your needle through, you're holding on to that thread until the last moment, and then you're making a little knot. To do this in the hand, you just need to manipulate a little bit differently. So let's put one there. So you need to hold the button much the same way, but with your fingers. Wrap around, still holding that taut. Place the needle into your thread. Then you can hold this taut either by securing with your thumb or with your fingers at the back here, whatever's most comfortable for you. And then let go at the last moment. The secret is to let go at the last moment. And just basically place as many as you wish. You are, you know, if you get one of these that's sort of gone loopy, don't worry, just stitch it down. Nobody's really going to notice and you can always work another stitch on top of it. And you just really want to fill this up, which will help to even out that center as well. So go over the petals, because it'll give it a nice effect if you do it that way. You can actually go over the petals themselves. If you really hate French knots, go right ahead and use beads. Not a problem at all. You could even do little stitches um, to cover this center up if you wanted to. And you could use colonial knots. But I have to say, French knots, once you get them, can be very, very addictive. And you find that you put them on all sorts of things. Right at the center of the button, you've got a lot of thread. And you may find that it's a little bit difficult pushing the needle through. 
So if that's ever the case, just use your table to push it through. If you find that this really happens and it's irritating you, you can always change to a sharp needle because the, the point is, you're, literally, the, that is the point. You're using a tapestry needle, so it doesn't easily split the threads at the center because it's designed not to easily split the threads. So if you change over to a sharper needle, you won't have quite so much difficulty pulling up through at the center. So, looking good. I'm going to fasten that off at the back now, just by weaving under some of these threads. And then I'm going to show you the last little finishing touch. And that's to take your needle and slide it underneath those petals and just round them up a little. Okay, and that's why when we were weaving, I said, try not to catch them because if you can just do that, you can add a little bit more depth and dimension. And you'll notice I'm doing the top petals, but you could also go back and do the bottom petals and just rounding it off just a little and pulling that up. So it adds just a little bit of extra dimension to your button. So there is one sunflower button. Now the sunflower button actually originated as a Texas yellow star back in my 2016 one button a day challenge. So as you can see, You've got quite a lot of options, really. I mean, these both happen to be yellow, but you could change these up for just about any other sort of five or 10 petaled flower. And of course, if you change the um, spokes and the dynamics, you can then also change how many petals you place on it in any ways. So you could go up to six or whatever. So there's a lot of options about how you can change this um, button up to make a different flower button. But I think at the moment, the sunflower is really the perfect one. Thank you ever so much for watching. Do please click subscribe, hit that like button, and um, let me know in the comments what you thought. If you'd like, um, what other sort of videos you would like, and uh, I can see what I can do. And don't forget that in the comments below, I will have listed all of the materials that I've used, which you can get over on our website. So take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.